what we're contemplating, what we're thinking is good for us, you know, self-consistent with us, with our own self-image. Okay. So, any any other comments about the exercise or anything else that you want to address right now? Yeah. Um, I found that it helped because I was focusing on that alone. Mm -hmm. And so many times you're listening to something, your mind just wanders. Wait, which is why you move to the next step. Because your your mind t will tend to wander. It will tend to it will tend to associate to various things, and then we're you know off here. Which is why you force yourself to move to the kinesthetic, which then grounds you. And then move back to the visual, and then the auditory, and then the kinesthetic. Because yes, if you're just focusing on on auditory representations, you can tend to sort of drift. Yeah, but I was able to focus there. Yeah, exactly. Good. Yeah. Does it, does this work to make you um, get your eyes are closed to begin with? Like if you're ready to go to sleep, mm -hmm. um, does this work for that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So you just can do it all in your mind. Exactly. Just yeah. you know what what you know. Imagine an object and just work through that the visual things that you can see okay. on the imaginary object. Or you know if your eyes are closed, what do you see? Well, I see darkness. Mm -hmm. You know, I see flashes of light periodically. You know, in the dark field. Um, so you can actually just stay with what's real, what's really going on, too, just as long as you're focusing on visual data. Okay? And yet, this will help guide you into a relaxed state, which then is the stepping point into sleep. Okay? All we're doing is just taking control of our attention. And we're specifically attending to specific things in a specific sequence under our direct control, under our will. And that's what causes this all to happen. Nothing magical or mystical here. We're just directing our attention in a specific way. And that's what we're doing. That's what that's where all of this comes. All of the early work done in the late 50s and 19s and early 1960s on attention uh, demonstrated this kind of a thing. Okay? Attention is will. We're willing it. We're focusing on something specific. Okay? Now, when we're in our normal, everyday beta state, sometimes we'll be fragmented. You know, we'll be sort of frazzled out there. Because there's a lot going on, and it does have an impact on the nervous system. And so sometimes that's when we need to, you know, regain control of it and focus it. Drop down into an alpha for one or two minutes, and then go back out into the real world out there, you know, the beta state world. And that will help us. Okay, other things, yeah. Sorry, you had a question? Yes. Well, it's not a question. So oh. I want to make sure that I understand it. Then. Okay. Recite three things about the object. Okay. Now, when we recite three things about what you hear or what you feel, it doesn't have to be about the object. No, no, just the object that you're looking so at. So that essentially at the end, we have only the object in our object. Well, ult ultimately, your eyes will close, and the object right. will, will the vanish. The object will be there. Only yes. the object. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay, I'm still confused. The object will actually vanish because your eyes will close. Okay. Okay? So, in other words, there, you're looking at a visual, you're looking at an object, and you're just describing what you see. I see this. I see that. I see the other. Okay? And you're focusing on one thing in general because that helps to narrow the concentration. Okay? And then you're just listening to whatever's going on in the room. And then you're feeling whatever's happening, you know, right that minute. Then you're going back to the object and saying what you see about the object. At some point, your eyes will simply naturally close. And so you will not have access to the actual visit, you know, visual object anymore. And then you'll just hear and then feel. And then you're done. You can stop at any given point, okay? Anytime you're, you drop down into the into that focused alpha state, you can stop the routine. Yeah? What happens if you get to the one thing and you can't see anything in the object? Then repeat what you see. What do you see? Just what I've already seen. Yeah, what you've already noticed. And yeah. then go on. Mm -hmm. And then just go on. Yeah, for, you know, white, uh, black letters, white... You know, I mean, you don't have to struggle to see new things about the object. 
All you're doing is just saying to yourself what you see. Okay? Yeah, there may be, it may be, you know, it may not be a very interesting object. So, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, because the, the objective is just focusing your attention, and the only reason we're even reciting things about it is so that we are involved in the seeing. That's all. So we're actually seeing, we're looking, we're, we're focusing, we're directly, deliberately focusing our attention on it, and then reciting what we see as we deliberately focus on it. Again, this is a, a direction of, of attention, which then gains control over the avatar because we're now taking control over all of the stuff which is normally happening unconsciously. It's normally happening according to the avatar's routines, which it can do forever. I mean, we can... You know, we can go daydream forever, and it will still continue to do its thing. What we're now doing is we're now taking control of the whole process. We're taking control of the avatar and its attentional facilities and its representational facilities for our own benefit. Yeah. What happens instead of an ob using an object if you use a person? A person is an object. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So whatever you want to look at. On a thing where you. Are personally yep. involved no. or anything. It's just okay. Yeah, just whatever you see. Yeah. You know, just pick an object out there in the visual field right. and focus your attention on it and then say what you see. Okay. That's all we're doing. Okay? Uh, Very you can do it on, on your body, for example, if you want to relax. Mm -hmm. You can start from the top of your head and say, My head is relaxed. Yes. I can see it. Sure. And then you go through the entire body, and then you are in a state that you feel totally relaxed, and you can tell yourself that you are enjoying that relaxation. Mm -hmm. Then you open your eyes, you can see, you can be active, or you can go sound asleep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, but that will not help you if you need to get up in front of a group and speak. Okay. Because, because its intention is to relax and do other things. This will work there. Okay. You can be up in front of a group of 10,000 people, run through this in 30 seconds, and be ready to speak to the crowd. Okay? Because this is, this is live time. This is real time. This is whatever's going on right now, this minute. You're taking control of the data stream, and you're beginning to program the alpha state, and then from the alpha state, you can go wherever you need to. Um, Bandler and Grinder talk about what they call uptime, which is their trance state when they are presenting. And it starts here, and then moves up into a high-level, high-energy, externally focused, interactive state. Okay? So this is not just for relaxation. This is for entering an alpha state. And eyes open out the state if you need to be. And then from there, everything continues. So you uh, just concentrate for the moment? Yes, what you're doing is you're moving into an alpha state at this point, and then from there, whatever you need to do. If you want to go to sleep or continue relaxing or whatever, do that. But if you need to attend a meeting or you need to, you know, go to court or whatever, <laughs> you know. Get off the nerves. Exactly, it'll focus everything and gain control of the avatar. Okay, so this is different than just your classical relaxation techniques, which certainly do that, okay? And yet, if you had enough time, run through the routine, relax, and then move back out into the real world, you could do that too. This yes, is... You can, you can uh, when you do it so frequently, uh -huh. then you can just sit in couple of seconds, you can relax. Sure. Yeah, you can relax completely, instantaneously. The yogis call it lightning relaxation. Yeah, it's just instantaneous relaxation. Okay? Okay, but this, this is taking control, this is taking control of the data stream. So it's a little more complex than just typical relaxation. This is taking direct control over the avatars, the data stream, and the representational systems. So in there, in the things that we have to do now, it's 
for example, if you are looking at something and repeating it, uh -huh. okay, how they can hijack my mind? Quick. A person that it, it is selling something or wants me to do what they want me to do. Do they go through the same process? No. Or they put me in that process? They're going, yeah, they're going to overwhelm your defenses. And they're going to rely upon unconscious processes that they can then link to. Okay? And it's very simple. Very simple. Very, very, very simple. Okay? What is the, what is the primary way that they get your attention right now in advertisement that you get through the mail? Or on TV? Visual. Visual. What, no. Uh, let me, uh, what do they do? Oh, they sell? Yeah, but what, what do they say to get your attention? What do they show you to get your attention? They offer you something. Yes, they offer you something. Why? Because that creates a debt. If they give you something for free, you owe them. Okay? And then they can take that little teeny weeny bit of debt that they have now created deliberately and use that as the wedge to get into everything else that they need. The minute you start listening to them, you're hooked. Because the minute you listen to them, it's over. If you let them continue talking for longer than 20 seconds, you will find yourself doing things you do not want to do. Because they're good at it, and this is powerful stuff. And we've been trained to be polite. Yes, extremely trained to be polite. <laughs> not to have, I like the idea that I'm talking and then have my... Right, that, that, will get us, that will get us out of that particular training. Yeah, guilty. Yeah. Yeah. I do feel guilty when sure. I, I get a free gift, and yep. then I have to listen to them. Yep. <laughs> A long time. <laughs> yeah. I remember um, we went down to Mazatlan. My dad had a timeshare down in Mazatlan. And so we went down there. And I, I just decided to go through their whole spiel up until the end just to see how they did this. So anyway, we're going along, and they've done all the things that they're doing. And they think they're doing really good. And right in the middle of everything, I just said, no, thanks. I'm sorry. Don't need to. And I got up and started to walk out. And he did. He got up and ran after me and said, how dare you be rude to me? Yeah. Okay? And this is in a room full of people, remember. So there's all this demand characteristics of the setting. So um, I was living in New York at the time. So I just turned around to him and said, I'm not being rude yet. You want to see rude? I'll make you rude. Come on. And he stopped. He just stopped and backed off, and I walked out of the room. So... <laughs> It's like, but that's how they get you. They get you in situations where you do not want to violate these characteristics, these demand characteristics. Mm -hmm. I get lost to the mail dinners. Yeah. Lunches. Lunches, exactly, okay. to come down and listen to these people talk and to I you. I get a free gift. Yep. I, uh, I get, uh, and usually the gift isn't that much. Uh -huh. And the dinner, for the gift, they bought me dinner. Mm-hmm. When I was dating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. He was dinner and then he asked for it. Exactly. And it was dinner. Yeah, it is in fact a, a psychodynamic seduction. That's what it is. They're seducing you. And then if the seduction doesn't work, then they get they aggressive. Get they get they aggressive. aggressive. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they, how that's, dare I say no? Yeah, exactly. How dare you say no? I've given you all these things. Right, you know. But I if, you're, if you're good at if you're good at saying no, then it's a free dinner. <laughs> it's a free dinner. Right. And this, this is how it always begins. It always begins, you know, they gave me free breakfast, and then they take you off and do all these other things, show you around, and then do the whole show. So, yeah, it's always, it's always building this like that. But it's clean your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they clean your house. Be polite. Again, no, they're going to do that. Yes, extremely. Yeah. So, yeah. we should say no. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We should not say no. Because it's impolite. Yeah. And we're raised to be we're raised to be polite, which is a good thing. It's a good value. Uh -huh. Okay, but we also have to be firm. Yes, we also have to definitely be firm. And not let these people hijack us, which is what they're trained to do. But we also do you know, I think people are getting smarter and smarter about no soliciting. Yes. At their door, but we open our door wide to all of these people all of the time. You don't have to open your door. 
Nope. Don't have to answer your phone. And don't you have, don't have to have do to anything. Turn your TV down nope. so that they won't think you're there. You yeah. don't have to open your door. Exactly. You don't have to do any of those things. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. We need to maintain total, absolute, uh, dictatorial control over <laughs> over the or you know over the avatar and everything that goes on around us. Yeah. I can do that in business, but I need to learn to do it with my kids. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that's a little harder. <laughs> that's a little harder. You don't yeah. have to open your door. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah there you go. That, that's the guilt thing. Yeah, they will guilt you. Yes? Yeah. I have a uh, security door. Uh, they have a lot of those in Las Vegas. They've got just yeah. a bunch of little holes. Yeah. You can see out really well. But they can't see mm. in. And I keep that door shut all the time. All the time yeah. I talk through them, to them through the screen. Uh, they can't see me. Right. I can see you them. You can see everything that they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Good point. Good point. Something and else? I yeah. I think we have to learn and teach the young children. It is not bad to say no. Yes. No is good. The same as yes. Yes, exactly. Yes is good. The thing that you believe, you say yes. Yes. The thing that is not. No, it's Say no. Bad. No, it's good. Yes, absolutely. Train them Because sometimes they, you know, I hear they, you know, mother or father, they say, I told you no, that is it. Then that stays with the child. Yes, yes. No, it's good. Yes, no, it's good. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's good. Yeah, we need to stand up. We need to be, we need, again, there are only, you know, psychodynamically speaking, there's only two ways to relate to other humans. We can either seduce them or fight with them, okay, sex or aggression. And so we have to have both poles. We have to be able to do both. And we have to be able to appropriately do both <laughs> under the appropriate <laughs> sense. Okay? All right, so any, we'll practice this again two or three more times until everyone's comfortable with it. And then we'll move on to the... Uh, to practicing the first part of the of the script, okay? Because remember, the the objective here is to be able to drop into a trance state while we are reading the script or saying the script from memory, however we want to do it, okay? Because we need to be in a trance to help the other person to drop into a trance, okay? Can we do this first before we start to speak? Yes, before we even begin, before we even begin. Erickson, especially if you watch the videotapes that he prepared, well, the videotapes that were made of him you know, doing his thing, um, you'll be able to see him actually, once you know what to look for, it's not obvious, but once you know what to look for, you'll be able to see him vary his trance depth continuously throughout whatever it is he's doing. So he moves up and then down, and you know, I mean, you'll, you'll actually be able to see it, and he points it out later. That's how we learn, because one of the questions he always asks is, during his training seminars is, how many times did I go into a trance? You know, and it's a lot. <laughs> he's almost always in a trance state, very rarely in a normal waking state when he's working with either groups of people or with individuals. And that's how it works so effectively because he's already there. So it's easier for him to guide the other person and it's easier for the other person or people to follow him into a trance state. This is one of the reasons why he was so effective, whereas, you know, Freud and the other authoritarians were not, because they were standing up there yelling, sleep, 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 you know, and hitting them on the forehead. Of course they're not going to follow you into a trance, because you're not in a trance. Oh, and this is how he could get away with not knowing the language. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because all he would do is just, because everybody, it doesn't matter what language you speak, these are the representational systems for human beings. And all he had to do was just lock into that and guide the people through this procedure, basically, by pantomime or by showing them what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And then they would automatically follow in. Yeah, I've, I've seen him, like one of the videos that they have is him somewhere in South America. I want to say Bolivia, could have been Argentina, somewhere down there. He doesn't, didn't speak the language. And so he's up on stage, and the, there's a woman that he's working with, and, I mean, he's just... He's not saying a word, and he's just pantomiming. He's holding onto her hand, and he's looking at her eyes, and you can see them both just sort of drop into this very profound trance state. Okay, so, yeah, it, it all is depending upon controlling the representational systems 
and controlling the um, the way that the nervous system and the you know the avatar is processing that data. That's what we're doing here. But how, uh, because I saw somebody at Dr. Oz, mm -hmm. he would do this. The person would go like this. Well, that's because there's a there's a post hypnotic suggestion. He's worked with him before. Worked with the person before to set no, up that. Said, um, it, that is a setup. Yes. So he has worked with some of. Absolutely. Them. Yeah. Oh, I thought it, it can't be. I yeah. couldn't believe it. Yeah. That she would come. He would come past somebody. Do this. Yeah. Past the other one. Yeah. Only it. because only because yeah, it was either a simulation, which is possible. Um, or if it were a true trans state, it would be posted not a suggestion to that cue that had been set up by six or seven or eight or twelve sessions already. Yeah, because you don't build that kind of rapport with somebody instantaneously. It's impossible. There is no such. This is called. This is the what, what the profession refers to as the Svengali effect. I've mentioned that before. The fact that this, you know, the. The hypnotist, the mesmerist, you know, can just simply gaze at you like Dracula, boom. Okay, that doesn't happen. That is, that is physically impossible. That just does not happen. So what you were watching was him, either there was, he was either simulated, that is, they were faking it, or it was the result of post-hypnotic suggestions earlier that they'd done before. Yeah, Ben? Would you show the, any of the Erickson tapes? I can bring in, uh, let me find it. Yeah, I can bring in some. Would you like to see them? Great. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you. Um, let me go find it. I have to find one. It's been a long time since I looked at it. Um, yeah, I'll bring in one because there's some a couple of short ones that we could really look at and see that are very instructive. Okay, so I'll do that next week. Good. And then we'll talk about next week's topic is everyday trans states. So that will lead right into that. We are in a constant, unless we are taking direct control, we are in a constant moving trance state, moving from state to state to state to state to state to state, to state depending upon the uh, environmental cues, okay? Which is one of the reasons why we feel frazzled at the end of the day, because we've been put in and out of different trance states and had the, you know, the requests to behave in certain ways based on those trance states that we were not aware of. Okay, so we'll we'll be I'll be out. You know, we'll show you exactly how that works uh, and how pervasive it is because we are. That's the only you know it's a tap and that. Okay, so let us run through this one more time. Just run through it one more time. Just allow your eyes to close this time. Sometime in the middle. Okay, because that will help. Just closing the eyes initiates the alpha state. Okay. And remember, just focus on whatever it is you're looking at and just recite three things that, are, that you see. Three things that are true about what you see. Okay? And then just allow yourself to drift down into that, into that relaxed, comfortable state. Very simple. Now, open your eyes slowly and maintain the same trance state. Okay, good. 
So we have to become comfortable with this eyes open trance when we're working with someone else. And, you know, one or more. It doesn't matter the number. We still have to be very comfortable with this. Notice that it automatically slows down the way that you speak. Softens the voice, lowers the register, just by going into this trance and then maintaining. Okay? So now, any questions about that? Yes? This time with the hearing room, this clock will be crazy. Ah, because you were now more aware of it? Yeah. Yeah. And normally I could hear it, could hear it, but yeah. now this time it was like, <laughs> exactly, it's right there. Yep. It's just right there. Is daydreaming a form of self hypnosis? Yes, day, yeah, exactly. Daydreaming is a complex, um, uh, imaginative trance state. Because now you're off, you know, seeing things, doing things, feeling things, hearing things, <coughs> saying things that have no relationship to the actual real environment, okay? And in fact, there is, uh, there were a number of studies conducted during the 50s and 60s and early 70s about susceptibility to hypnosis. And the major studies, the ones that were actually conducted on, you know, large groups of people were conducted out of Stanford, they were conducted out of Stanford Research uh, hypnotic research center there, um, and they discovered that the only consistent thing they could find that indicated an ability to enter into a hypnotic state was the ability to imagine, to, to daydream. People who were able to actively imagine things seemed to be able to enter into very deep somnambulistic kinds of states, including even those states necessary for surgical interventions, things like that. They were the ones who had a really good uh, ability to visualize, to, to imagine. Okay? So yeah, people who, can, who have a good imagination are typically very good hypnotic subjects and can learn the skills very quickly and, and learn them to a very high level. What about your dream? Dreams are uh, two things about dreams. Number one, dreams are Psychodynamically speaking, they are encoded communications from the avatar to you about emotional impacts of events during the day. Okay? Freud called it the day residue. That is, there's going to be some event or series of events from the day or maybe the previous day, you know, within the next, within the, you know, one or two days, that had some emotional impact on the avatar itself. And that will then be encoded in the dream symbolism. Okay? And so in order to understand what the avatar is trying to tell us, we have to decode it. We have to figure out what it is trying to tell us in the symbolic dream imagery. Because it will be talking about something specific that happened to us that had some emotional impact. Okay, now, go ahead. Well, I had a dream the other night, and it was so real. That it woke me up. Oh, okay. I mean, it was like I, I dreamt, which did not happen. It had 10 years ago. I had my purse stolen out of my car. Okay. But that's 10 years ago. Right. But I had a dream the other night again that my purse was stolen, and it was so vivid that I woke that up and woke I was up? sweating. I mean, it okay. was horrible. Okay, so something, when we get imagery of a personal items being stolen, that is an aggressive act against us. It's a violation of our yeah. space. Something happened, I would guess, within the last couple of days that had a symbolic meaning like that. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody invaded your space, somebody stole something from you, somebody did things like that, mm -hmm. that it was such an intense experience for the avatar mm -hmm. that it's saying, wow, that's <laughs> like that. Yeah. And so, it, so it, it, it constructed the dream from earlier events, way earlier events. And then now we have to we have to figure out what it is referring to, what event it's referring to, and what people it's referring to with yeah. relationship to that event. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, but there, that's what it's talking about. The dream symbolism is always related to something that happened to us recently, very recently. And it's the emotional response to those events. Now remember that there's always, <clears throat> since the only two events, uh, the only two relationships that the avatar can have with another avatar are sexual and aggressive, those are the, those are the two poles around which the dream symbolism will revolve. Something will either be perceived as a seduction or as an aggression. In this case, probably an aggression. Okay? And, it, and, and the scale of intensity, of course, can vary. I mean, it can be an overt, you know, like, for example, um, uh, dreams about being physically raped. I mean, that's, that's obviously much more intense than, you know, a mild seduction going on over here. Okay, but you can get intense dreams about violations and rapes in response to something that your boss did to you. That overtly was not obviously a rape, a takedown and a rape, but that symbolically was. And so the dream imagery now creates an actual rape event in order to represent how violent this particular response, this particular event was for the unconscious mind, for the avatar. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what we're dealing with when we're dealing with dream interpretation. Um, and we, we, uh, there are certain rules. There's a very small set of rules that the, that the unconscious, the avatar, uses in order to encode the dreams. And with just that little bit, you can figure out most of your dreams now. Look for aggressive and sexual behaviors that were not noticed during the day by people around you, and then correlate that with the intensity of the dream. Okay, because it's always going on. It's constantly going on. All right? Um, and sometimes it's really like slimy. You'll get that feeling, the kinds of interactions we're having with other people. Okay? Sometimes it's innocent. Okay? And, and doesn't have any really emotional impact. Then we can laugh at that and it's kind of fun and it's okay there. But other times it's, it comes out of left field. We don't really recognize it for what it is because we are trained to be polite, okay? And so we tend to respond consciously, we tend, we, the thinking substance which we are, tends to respond politely to even the most overt acts of aggression and sexuality. But the avatar has no such constraints and it will encode that information in that dream and then we... We have to pay attention to that because it's trying to get our attention, saying, hey, you were violated today, and we need to do something about that. Mm -hmm. And it happens all the time, and it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's ugly when it does happen. Yeah? How about if you can't remember your dreams? Um, if you cannot remember your dreams, it means that they are being suppressed or repressed because they are pretty violent and or seductive. Okay? During the dream cycle, we go through somewhere between four and eight dream cycles throughout the night. And there will, they will be there. If we were to hook you up to an EEG machine, it would show those dream cycles. And if we were to wake you up in the middle of them, you would remember that dream. But, because we tend not to, you know, uh, we tend not to be aware of our dreams at all, and because a lot of it is just sort of everyday stuff, that doesn't rise to the level of, you know, we need to talk about this. <laughs> um, uh, you know, we typically don't even remember all of that stuff. It is going on. It's always there. And the ones that we tend to remember are the ones that happen just before we wake up. Okay? Now, dreams that repeat them. Now, you can, um, if you want to learn how to do dream analysis and you want to get access to your dreams, which is, you know, a good idea. Um, then what you need to do is you need to put, uh, at night, just put a pen and a paper next to your bed, okay, and set your alarm for about two and a half hours. Oh, my gosh. Okay? I have, I have such a hard time sleeping. Oh, well, then don't, don't do that. Set it, set it when you normally would get up. Set the alarm for about a half hour before that time. Okay. So go to sleep and then wake up a half hour before you normally would wake up and immediately write down what you remember. 
Okay, and pretty soon it will become second nature and the dreams that are important will obviously come to your attention and you'll write them down. Okay, if you can, you know, check the dreams throughout the night. Set it for every about, about two hours and wake up and see what the dream cycles are as you go through them. That's kind of instructive. It does interfere with your sleep, though, for, the, for a couple of days while you're doing it. But you'll be able to see that about every two hours you're dropping into that delta, uh, into the uh, theta cycle and, and you're having dreams. Now, the other thing that we know from the neurophysiological perspective is that the nervous system itself is now taking all of the data from the day and transferring the important stuff into long-term memory, from short-term memory into long-term memory. And this, of course, is a bioelectrical, biomechanical, biochemical kind of transfer. And that's what's going on during the theta cycle. That's where the dreams come from, is this transfer process. And during that transfer process, the avatar, the unconscious mind, actually encodes the data that it wants you to remember. So it's actually, it's actually at a high level encoding that we can then gain access to and understand what it's talking about. Okay? All right, we have run out of time. So um, download this um, and practice saying it after you've dropped into that relaxed, comfortable state. Okay? Next week, next week, like I said, I'll bring Erickson and we can watch him and see, see how it's done. We can actually see him as he does these things. Uh, the other thing is I am thinking of having an eight-week seminar next semester just on practice, just practice and no theory. Would you be interested in that? Yes, yes. I'd put it, it'd be about an hour. So we just come in and for an hour, you know, just do it. And we can just practice until we get really good at it. Would that work? Yes. Okay, so I'll submit that. And the same thing, the same thing for the meditation, just an hour of pure practice on meditation. Mm -hmm. And then would you be interested in a yoga class? Yes. yes. Okay? Okay, so I'll put those three, I'll propose those. I don't know if they'll approve them, but <laughs> I'll propose them. And uh, so I'll I'll do that. And we'll see you all next week. And, uh, You're almost through that schedule. Oh, they are? Oh, okay. I'm missing a couple of classes. Am I the only one that doesn't understand the concept of an avatar? Probably. Yeah. Not the only one, but yeah. What is the avatar? This is the avatar. We're the avatar. No, you are not the avatar. You are not the avatar. You are something completely different. This is the avatar. You are not your body. You are that thinking substance which interacts with that body, which interacts with that other in order to have these kinds of experiences. But you are not your body, and you are not any of this stuff, and you have no relationship to the biomechanical, biophysical kinds of stuff that goes on out there. Your soul? soul is the old term for it. Okay, but again, that has connotations that, well, not of religion, but of physicality. Okay, that... Conscious and unconscious. No, un unconscious here is the body. The avatar is conscious, but it is a consciousness to which we have no access. So from our perspective, it's unconscious. Because it does things that we have no clue about. I mean, we, we have no idea of how it does the things that it does. Absolutely nothing. We don't know how it walks. We don't know how it digests food. We don't know how it repairs tissues. We don't know how it drives when we're talking to someone else. We don't know any of that stuff. It does. It knows it. It does it every day. It does it every nanosecond. So it has its own consciousness, its own being, its own way of doing things. We don't have any access to that. But it's inside of us? No, no. We're not inside. Inside and outside have no relationship here. The avatar is this. This is the avatar. Okay? We are that which is looking through the eyes of the avatar. Oh, I see. Okay? Okay. Yes. Um, I'm not terribly computer literate, mm -hmm. and so I had my husband download or the files uh, onto the CD, mm -hmm. and it won't play. The uh, which file did he download? The, the ones that um, have all of the scripts and stuff on. 
Okay, yes, they, that, the it won't. The, uh, it doesn't fit the one that say when it's in the car. Okay. Did he make a dated CD? Yes, I think that's true. Yes, you have to be, if you're just downloading the, the script, the, the PDF file, uh, that will be uh, a data, a data. Okay, so here, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and I'll show you. We'll just figure it out. Okay, so we're here, and we want to go to the seminars. Okay, so here we're in analytical analysis, so we just look at that one. Okay, so now this one here, this that one, was just the disclaimer. Well, this was the syllabus. Yeah, the syllabus and everything. Yeah, so we're going to yeah. save link as. Okay, and then it's going to bring up this dialogue. Okay, and so what we want to do is we'll put it in downloads. Okay, so there isn't. All right, so save. Save it to the hard disk here under download. Now this is this is now available to us because it's on the hard disk here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now if he moved it over to a CD, he would have had to have used the proper kind of a program in order to oh, do that. Well, if I bring you on a CD, mm -hmm. uh, you talked about that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, if I bring you on a CD, would you download stuff with the file? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. So I can do that next sure, time. Sure, absolutely. But next time... Uh, I'll need two CDs okay. in order to get... Because one of them, the one for the audio files, actually has to be a, a music CD. Oh, okay. And oh, that's, okay. A different, that's a different format. Oh, okay. So okay. I, need, I can't put them both on the same CD. Okay. Okay? Um, but next week is the last class. The last class for this class. Uh -huh. oh, and so when would I pick up the CD? Oh, um, I could... Uh, Oh, well, I'll, let me just make them. I'll just make them and bring them next week. Okay. Okay? And, and I'll, I'll bring you a couple of clean ones that don't have any recordings on so you don't have to oh, get out the CD. Oh, that's fine. That, yeah, they're, that yeah, that's okay. okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. I mm -hmm. appreciate You're that. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, this out. Oh, 